Amidst a firestorm of accusations about harassment and bullying within the ranks of the Liberal Party, there are many questions about who knew what and when. Two cabinet ministers have been suspended from caucus since we first uh, talked about and broke this story last week, but there are rumblings about inappropriate behavior that go back much further than that. To offer some perspective on this story, former finance minister Kathy Bennett is in our studio this morning. She's the Liberal MHA for Windsor Lake. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning, Fred. Uh, This is the first time you've spoken publicly about what's been on the go over the last week. So first of all, we'll start off, Ms. Bennett, by asking you, what's your reaction to everything that's gone on over the last week in the House of Assembly? Um, I, you know, the reason that I'm here this morning um, is really to support my colleagues in the House of Assembly. Um, you know, Sherry Gammon Walsh and Tracy Peary, um, and anyone else who might c- come forward um, in future. Um, I'm here uh, because they were brave enough to speak out, and um, you know that's that's the reason I'm here this morning. Um, as for what's gone on in the House of Assembly over the last week, um, I think it's really important for us to understand that, you know, while it may have unfolded in the legislature, this is not a legislature issue. This is a workplace harassment issue. Um, this is about women um, working in an environment um, that's uh, predominantly men and has been for decades. And um, it's a culture um, that has been fostered um, and allowed uh, to f- foster for a long time. You left cabinet last July. Um, prior to that, you had spoken publicly about the attacks that you faced on social media, very personal mm-hmm. attacks, some that involved you, you know, asking you to die. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was body shaming. I mean, social media can be ruthless. But that's not the reason you left cabinet. Well, I mean, the cyberbullying, when I spoke out about that in December of uh, 2016, um, I did it because I felt um, a strong responsibility in the role I had as um, Minister for the Status of Women at the time um, to be authentic and be truthful about what I had experienced. It was very difficult to do, um, but I was very um, privileged to be able to be in a position that I could do that uh, when so many women... Uh, and so many young people uh, weren't. Um, you know, when I left cabinet um, last uh, end of July last year, um, at the time I said it was for for personal reasons. And um, you know, I, anybody who has been in um, a situation or a circumstance that um, you know is uh, is about. Um, making people uncomfortable, um, where, uh, you know, you question whether or not uh, you're included, where you feel isolated, where you feel intimidated. Um, those are very personal choices when, when people make decisions around that. And I said at the time I left cabinet for personal reasons, and that's exactly what I did. Because you were bullied or intimidated in cabinet? Well, what, you know, my experience um, and uh, in my role uh, was really... What I experienced was things like um, intimidation, um, isolation was something that I experienced um, regularly. From uh, your fellow cabinet ministers? Which is a form of uh, bullying, yep. Um, You know, there's mobbing, which happens when you have a group of people together and uh, one opinion is uh, pervasively supported. The dissenter um, is often ostracized and and moved to the side. you know, I experienced mild gaslighting. Um, and all that is wrapped up with, um, you know, things that are known to happen in, in cultures where uh, bullying and harassment is allowed to um, happen. Things like bystander effect, you know, where people who have not, um, you, you know, go along with, with groupthink and, and, you know, they, what, what happens is the, you know, pylons can happen. Um, and it can be really challenging for, for those people that experience it, particularly women. And as I said, the reason I'm here this morning is, you know, I have very brave colleagues who spoke out. Um, they've made it um, by their actions, both Sherry Gammon Walsh and Tracy Perry, um, have made it safer for me to come forward. And just like I felt a responsibility in December 2016, um, I feel a responsibility to come forward and support my colleagues um, because I don't believe that 
um, good governance, good government, good bureaucratic functioning um, should be based on um, on these types of tactics. I, I just it may have may have served a purpose in one one point in our history. I don't know. I can tell you it doesn't serve a purpose today. This is not what you expected when you got into politics. No, I mean the the cyberbullying and you know the um, the the public um, demonstrations and and shows of um, angst around government decisions. Those are things I think that are uh, you know you expect um, certainly citizens um, and you know people that I represent have a right and should. And I encourage them to show their opinions in forms that they feel comfortable in. But I don't think anybody, particularly women, um, who are uh, in politics or in any workplace that's associated with politics, they may not be in the, in the front rooms, they may not be in the House of Assembly, they may be in the back rooms, they may be in uh, the bureaucracy, they may be in the agencies. You know, nobody deserves to be working in an environment where um, power, politics, um, is more important than policy and more important than um, decisions that are need to be made in a workplace where it's uh, respectful. What examples can you give of the, the type of bullying and intimidation you received or, yeah. or, or were the brunt of in cabinet or caucus? Um, well, like I said, you know, there was um, the isolation for me was um, a real challenge. Um, I had been can you can you explain what you mean by isolation? They just wouldn't talk to you, or well, there'd be um, there'd be um, you know things that I'd find out after the fact that you know were obviously um, you know meetings or meet, informal meetings or meetings that happened. Um, there would have been um, you know the uh, purposeful purposely not talking to you in meetings. There'd be you'd be excluded from things, and that isolation um, you know at the time. Um, I'm not sure I really understood the effect of it. I really, um, I, I had not been in politics before. Um, I wasn't sure exactly how um, the political environment operated. What I know now with some perspective um, since I left cabinet um, and since Sherry and, and Tracy, um, you know, have shared their stories with me personally, um, is that my experience was not unique. Um but for me, my choice uh, was to leave cabinet, and um, and it's a decision that uh, was right for me, and it was a very personal one at the time. But you ultimately left, to be clear, because of the treatment you received from fellow cabinet ministers. I think that, um, you know, the, like I said, the isolation, um, the intimidation, the, um, you know, the, the 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 bad behavior that was allowed to happen. Right. I mean, it. This type of behavior um, that I'm describing, um, it doesn't have to be, you know, big, um, big one-time events that, uh, you know, you, you know, you can have disagreements about policy. Right. I mean, that, I think that's one of the really important things you can. Um, on, and I was happy to uh, have um, disagreements about policy with my colleagues. You know, so many of the people in the House of Assembly on both sides of the government, uh, and especially on my side have so many different life experiences that they bring a huge value to the table. So having a discussion around policy is a legitimate discussion. But when your difference uh, turns into, um, or your difference of opinion turns into, um, you know, quiet whisper campaigns, um, or, you know, um, things like, um, you know, being excluded from discussions, that's, that's where it crosses a line. You know, back on March the 27th, I brought a po private member's resolution into the House of Assembly. And in my speaking notes that day, I read this statement. I said that she had refused to cooperate with his plans. So he made sure he gossiped about her. He spread rumors about her. He tried to ruin her reputation and her career. And she silently persevered while struggling with the emotional abuse from the bully. And that was the fifth example I gave in the House of Assembly of workplace bullying. And that was my story. Who were you talking about? Who was the bully? It was the they. It was the culture. It's the environment. Um, it's the bad behavior that's allowed to happen um, that puts people in situations where um, they question whether or not they are competent. They, 
um, they wonder if they're uh, able to contribute. And I mean, I, I get into politics to, to try to do the right thing. And I'm not perfect. I'd never suggest and sit here and say that, you know, every decision that I contributed to in the government of Newfoundland and Labrador uh, was perfect. But I tried and was passionate about trying. And, you know, the intimidation um, and the workplace environment and the bad behavior that continued um, made it very, very, very challenging. That's and within your own party. More difficult than what I experienced with cyberbullying. Uh, well, obviously, people knew about this. So did you say that it was allowed to continue? Did your boss, Premier Dwight Ball, know about this and allow it to continue? Was he part of it? Um, you know, what I'll say about that is that, you know, I was an experienced, uh, I am an experienced business person. I have, a, you know, decades of experience in, um, in the business community. Um, and I think, you know, a CEO or a leader um, of an organization has a right and a responsibility to set the tone and also uh, set the values by which um, the organization needs to operate and the group needs to operate. And, you know, if they don't, that behavior will continue. Um, and I think that, you know, leaders have a responsibility in all sectors, whether it's in um, sports, it's in business, it's in unions, it's in government, um, have a responsibility to set the tone. And I think, you know, the conversation that we're having today, the conversation that's been ha we've been having for the last week, the conversation we had around my PMR, the conversation we're having about Me Too and Time's Up, is a conversation that says our workplaces must be respectful to allow everyone to participate. And that the behaviors that were okay in other decades are not okay today. They're not okay. You know, women have a right to be at those policy tables and I'm going to be at that policy table. And that's why uh, when I um, resigned, um, you know, I've worked hard as a backbencher and hard as a, a caucus member. Um, but the culture and the behavior, the bad behavior um, is systemic. So the premier allowed this to continue, in your opinion? I think that's something that he's going to have to um, answer for himself. Across the island, you are listening to an exclusive interview with Windsor Lake MHA Kathy Bennett on CBC Radio 1. We're also st streaming live right now on the CBC NL Facebook page. You can watch the video there. I'm Chrissy Holmes with Fred Hutton. Ms. Bennett, um why did you wait until now to come forward? I mean, you, you did in, in December of 2016 come forward about the, uh, the cyber attacks and you spoke very publicly about that and passionately, but now you're, you're coming forward. Uh, is it because the others have cleared the way? I mean, were you afraid to come forward? Yeah, ab absolutely. I think um, whether it was a, um, a rational fear, um, some might argue it was a real fear for me. Um, I feared for my, um, my reputation the work I was doing, um, and Sherry and Tracy, um, the conversation that they've started, um, and, you know, just talking about their own experiences, um, as they uh, shared with me, um, I made a commitment. And my commitment was that I'd support them. And um, that's the reason I, I'm here today. Um, they, made, they made it safe for me, and I believe they've made it safe for others to come forward uh, and speak about their experiences. Um, and again, I, you know, I, I don't believe this is um, an, uh, isolated to the legislature. I think this is a situation where, um, you know, I, I fully expect that we'll see more, um, more women uh, coming forward and speaking about uh, their experiences. Um, but to this point, within the Liberal Party, bullying and harassment has been if not condoned, allowed. Is that what you feel? Uh, it's certainly the, certainly the experience that I've had. Other people may have had a different experience, but that's been mine. You were bullied. I feel uh, absolutely. I, you know, intimidation, um, the isolation, the mobbing, um, you know, the, the, the bystander effect where, you know, people 
um, align with the bully versus aligning with the victim, um, which led to groupthink, all those things um, I've experienced. And, um, and it's been difficult. You spoke about your business experience. At any given time, your businesses could employ up to hundreds of people. You mm-hmm. own a number of uh, restaurants. Um, coming from the private sector, would this type of behavior be allowed to continue there? Yeah. Um, well, it's been a long time since I've been in the restaurant business. I, I, it's been about four or five years now. But what I will say um, is I spent decades working there. And I think uh, while you know the private sector is... Uh, has its uh, its challenges and its issues. Um, I think the expectations around what um, the tone from the top uh, needs to be uh, is higher, and um, that the training, the um, the tolerance, the um, expectations are clearer. And um, it was certainly eye opening for me. I, I did really didn't expect. I mean, I knew that. I wasn't naive. I knew politics was going to be tough. Um, I knew it was going to be tough because people have polarizing opinions, and rightly so. That's what democracy is about. It's about polarizing opinions. It's about us having a disagreement about what we think is best for the province, and um, and those are good, rich conversations to have. And not everybody is going to win their argument, and that's fine because at the end of the day, you know, you need to come up with a win-win solution, but not a win-lose solution. And what um, I've experienced, and I think what um, I, you know, I've seen from my my colleagues' uh, uh, examples, is that the win lose um, uh, battle is so important, uh, and the politics is so important that it takes over um, what's right and it takes over what um, good governance is. Are you surprised that Eddie Joyce and Dale Kirby are out of cabinet? I mean, they've been accused of being bullies. Um, so are I, they among the people who were against you? Yeah, I can't comment on the circumstances uh, that the Premier um, made his decision on. Um, I can tell you that um, there's many um, men that I work with in uh, caucus who I feel are um, of genuine, um, authentic um concern for the province. And I think that um, they need, we all need, me included, um, need uh, a work environment that the expectations are clear and that that tone um, is set and that everybody understands what's permissible and what's not permissible. Um, and I think that, you know, the male colleagues that I've worked with, um, at least what I've the ones that have spoke to me in the last uh, couple of days, um, some of them are as uh, bewildered and confused about what's been going on as well. But it, it speaks to the symptom of when b- the bad behavior is allowed to happen, the um, the bystander effect where people align with everybody but the victim um, is a known phenomena. And that is something I think that uh, you know we all, we're going to need to continue to challenge ourselves as a caucus to address. Before you left cabinet, was the premier... Premier Dwight Ball aware that you were being bullied and that you felt that way? Um, I would say that the Premier was aware um, that I needed his support. And you didn't get it? um, My decision to leave Cabinet um, and to leave uh, was really personal for me. And it was my choice. Um, I'm sure... Uh, that the Premier um, would have wanted me to stay. Um, he told me that. Um, but my choice was my own to leave. Um, some out there will say, of course, that this is this may be in some way politically mm-hmm. motivated. You ran against Dwight Ball for the leadership and lost yeah. and then uh, had to deliver a, an unpopular budget mm-hmm. and that uh, perhaps you weren't defended by your own government. Well, that's exactly what the problem is with this situation, right, is that, um, you know, calling out bad behavior um, um, could be met with punishment, which, you know, and the punishment could be um, um, people having a perception about what my choices are that are not true. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, ex- I am prepared for that. I've, you know, what Sherry and Tracy did in speaking about their own experiences, um, I think has made it safe for me and my focus 
my 100% focus is supporting my colleagues. Um, and I'm not going to be part of and be involved with um, any groups today or in the future um, in any part of my life ever again where bad behavior is allowed uh, to fester, foster, um, and not be addressed. I, I just, it's unacceptable in today's day and age. It doesn't have to happen. We have so many other things in our province that we need to be working together on and putting all ideas on the table and everybody's talents to use <clears throat> that this, this can't happen anymore. Can you stay in the Liberal Party now if that's the way you feel about it? Will, <clears throat> will you stay? Um, I'm not going to comment on the future. Um, you know, my focus and one of the things I want to say very clearly is, is about the investigation of what's happening. I don't think, um, I don't think that having the um, office of the, um, the, the legislative standards investigate this is the right approach. I disagree with it strongly. Why? I've told my caucus that and I've told the premier that. The reason is, is that um, I think this work an investigation needs to be done by an organization or by people who really understand the dynamics of workplace bullying and harassment and how it affects people. Um, this is a highly, highly specialized area of employment and workplace culture. Um, it needs to be done by a totally independent entity um, with the skill and expertise in harassment. And I want to say again, this is not a legislator legislation, a legislator um, issue. It's a workplace harassment issue. Do you and feel that you're going to be ostracized even further for speaking out today? Um, I'm prepared for that. And I, I'm not going to prejudge what's going to happen when I go to the House today. This is obviously very personal for you as well um, because of all the, the things that have been said about you. Um, and you said you were ready for that in politics. But when at the end of the day, you have to go home to your husband and, mm -hmm. and two boys. What kind of a personal toll did this take on you? Um, I think it's been a... And them. I think it's been really challenging for people who love me. Um, they've been really hurt. Um, but one of the things that has been a positive is that um, I think my children, because we've been very honest in the conversations in our house, I've been very honest with them as their mom, um, is that they're learning and they're understanding what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And that's a gift that um, they'll be able to take into their adult lives, I hope, into the workplaces that they someday participate in. Uh, because the best we can do is to make sure that our children don't repeat our mistakes and our 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 tolerance for for bad behavior. Um, but it has been very challenging uh, on our family.